Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Art Cast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together, take a walk around various topics that tend to cross one's path when you go on this adventure of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Droz. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. Hey, I'm Ryan Stenzinger. I'm a, I'm a, I'm user, a user experience designer. User experience designer. I, I coach I, folks, I coach to, folks to, design to, and, to design and, and create and meaningful products. And, and I make, and interactive, I make stories, interactive like stories. Games, like games. Uh, and, how you doing, uh, Jersey? How you doing, Jersey? <laughs> okay. We, there's been a, we, we did a rebroadcast last week because there's been a lot of changes going on, both in our lives and in the as we iterate on this project we call Lean Into Art, uh, making this this show. Um, one, I moved into a new house as anybody who's been pay paying attention to the show can see I'm in a different space than what you typically see. Um, I'm in my new basement <laughs> studio. Um, I thought you were floating in the matrix. Floating in the matrix. <laughs> Isn't that, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is going to tie into our topic today. Cause like I haven't done any like actual, you know, uh, organization of the space yet. All I've gotten here right now is just my desk with my, you know, desk, uh, my laptop and, my cameras for doing the show uh but the room is is blank as the wall behind me so it's like blank canvas what am i going to do with it you know i've only begun to think about what i'm going to do with this space but the other thing is that we're playing around with like a whole lot of new technology in making the lean tar cast to make it like a little bit of a um uh how would you describe it like what are we trying to do with the, with the new technology we've been playing with what are we trying to do? What are well, we trying, trying to, to create, well, a, trying richer to create a richer experience um, um, where where there's a lot of capabilities, there's a lot of that, capabilities this that, that this afford. media can afford, and and we've kept it we've kept uh, it uh, like really simple. Like I mean, really the, simple. Like I mean, the, like leaning like is mostly a conversation about us as we think about uh, how we engage uh, how we engage with some aspect of some our work, work, so a bit of work, reflection, so a bit of and analysis, and reacting to one another, unpacking, unpacking. Mostly what the show is. Once in a while, once in a while, a guest will join us. But it's that conversation. But it's that conversation. But then once in a while, then once in a while, we do visual things. And and we know we all sorts know of all sorts of other people are doing stuff in the world are doing and in the why world and we why couldn't somehow make somehow make like more that visual like more that visual show. stuff a part of the show and then here we go starting and then here we go starting to dip our toe in to um to, you, know, um, uh, you know trying to level up trying to stuff level like, up with you know, stuff OBS like studio be a studio a few episodes back a few episodes back where um, you know, we're thinking, um, you know, like, we're thinking, well, we have a like, ton of well, we have a ton of practice live presenting in live and in person. How could we? How could we in this time of in this of time like of pandemic, of like pandemic, so remote content, so remote content happening? And how could we? How could sort we? Of, you know, sort of, you know, bring more of bring that more sort of live, sort of live, and flexible, and and flexible, very and kind of experience, kind of experience into, into, into our project. into our project. Um, um, so you know, so we you know we we've we've. We're working on it. As We're working see. on it, as and you'll see. Some of it has, some of it um, has, uh, like last uh, week, like <laughs> last week, we, <laughs> there's just too much, <laughs> just broken. too much broken. <laughs> we, couldn't do the show. we couldn't do the show. <laughs> no. it, yeah, it, it took us, it took us a couple of meetings to get together to try to figure out how we get all this thing to work. It's, it, it, it seems like you know everybody's used to Zoom meetings now, so it's like, how hard can it be? Just meet over a thing and do a thing. Well, but like if you want to actually like record the audio locally, record the video locally, stream it out to a source, and route one instance of OBS into something like Skype to capture it, another instance of OBS, it gets a little bit complicated. Not to complain about it, but more just to point out that it's been um, it's been a fun adventure over the last couple of weeks in the background while we've been uh, posting, you know, uh, rebroadcasts to, to to you know keep the feed going while we're rewiring this thing like an octopus um okay so <laughs> any other preamble before we kick into the topic today we're going to be doing some uh drawing exercises and we're going to talk a little bit more about studios again because i'm in this this, this nether world right now that i want to turn into a space what do you think? Uh, yeah i think uh, yeah i think well we've got well we've, we've got, got some experiments we've got some experiments so hopefully, so hopefully um, like you, you were teasing like up you, you some, were teasing some up visual some, some visual stuff. We're going stuff. to draw, going do to some draw, drawing games, do some drawing and, uh, games, then, and you know, talk uh, a bit more, you know, talk a bit more about the, about the intentional the, the stuff, intentional we've, been stuff we've been trying to put together for this. For this. And then, of course, we have our, then of course, we have our two-minute. Oh. Wow! I stuck wow! On you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Low frame rate. Low frame rate. <laughs> <laughs> some low frame rate excitement. 
uh, low frame rate boogie, low frame rate boogie. <laughs> and then as Rob said, with the two minute practice in the, in the third section of the show. So Rob, did you manage to get into the, the whiteboard that I sent out you a link to in Skype? Um, well, if it's well, the same one in our show notes, yes, if it's not, then, it's it's new. Not, then new. All right, it should uh, be the same one. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. there. So let me pull that up on the screen right now. And so we're using a web whiteboard, which I found to be a pretty, yep, I see you right in there, Rob. Um, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty good, uh, what would you call it? Collaboration, live collaboration, browser-based application. Uh, I, I played around with a bunch of these uh, over the last couple months, like getting ready for some different projects happening this fall. And this seems to be the one that has the most, um, less, the least amount of latency. So that said, drawing games. I don't know what you've got for me, Rob. I really don't. So I'm excited to learn what we're going to be doing together. <laughs> all right, all right. So this is, um, yeah, an interesting experiment too because I really I can't see what everyone else is seeing. So um, well, what you, what I have is. Yeah a bit of a, um, an activity that we played around with, um, in, in, around the house. Uh, you know, there's a, I have a, a six year old and a 10 year old and, um, we were getting lots of practice in, in recent months to do, you know, various, various, uh, home schooling activities, remote learning. And, uh, I like to sprinkle in other, other stuff and, and, uh, because, well, I mean, it's, it, it's a fun oh. opportunity. I'm, I, we're getting from the chat. People are saying that you're audio doubling. People are getting your audio twice, and I don't know why that is. Oh, oh. that's that's a shame. I wonder if <laughs> our video is going to be lost in this one. Um, you know what? I don't know what to do about that. So, <laughs> well, I can I can mute. Okay, I'm going to mute Rob's mic just for a second. Rob, say a few things. Okay. Now I can hear you still. Can you now it's good. Everybody says it's good in the chat. Okay. I just need to flick something. See, we're learning more about OBS all the time. <laughs> okay. So continuing. I'm sorry about that, Rob. So Okay. So do do the bibliomancy uh, move where you flip, flip, flip. Or, or for you, just scroll, scroll, scroll through your search results and then land on an inspiration. And from there, do, do this. First, draw what, you, what is calling to you as the primary, the primary shape, the, prim, the primary sort of um, like thing defining it. So it's just a, this, is a, this is sort of a, a, a drawing in three stages or more, it's up to you, but like it's a hierarchy. So do the primary shape, then do a secondary shape, and then tertiary shape, right? And then you can do anything you want from with your sketch. You could turn it into, you know, where you do outlines or whatnot. So like this was my first experiment, and this was my second experiment where you see I went through with, um, you know, the a blue, uh, blue pencil. In this case, it's mechanical, and I, I colored some tape blue, so I remember which one's my blue line pencil and then then i started um to to switch it up a little bit and all this it was just taking one of those um uh, the japanese design motifs as inspiration to explore and then i got more wild as time went on so this was my i think whatever third or fourth one 
and this is the final one I landed on where it just I got freer and looser as I went. So you can do this uh, just just once as a warm up, or you can sort of get, uh, dig deeper and do do a few of these. So. All right. So what do you think, Jersey? So you're going to pull up those designs on the screen. Like I'm, we're looking at your desk right now. Um, and so if you want to sl- slide that book into the frame, I'm going to pick one of those and I'm just going to try to copy it and then try to expand upon it. That sounds great. So it's so what what is calling out to you most? It could be anything in the drawing. Like so what's most important to you and then what's next most important and what's so if you see one shape, that's most important. Great. If you see two shapes, great. Mm-hmm. But just go from main shapes to secondary shapes to tertiary shapes. Gotcha. So do that in three stages for your okay, drawing. Okay. So I'm looking at the one on the top right with like the sort of Venn diagram looking um, symbol, and that, and so right. I'm just thinking of copying that. So now you, so I switch to the drawing board, and everybody's just going to see the drawing board when I switch to that. So. Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. And because, yeah, because I got OBS Studio running, I can actually still see what that uh, top right corner is. Um, so, like, I see, you know, two diamonds, not diamonds, but like sort of um, waxing gibbuses, right? And But then I see the, them intersecting with one another and the crossing over and the creating of repeating shapes, almost like a fractal keeps going keeps going right and if i did another one in here and change my ink color and keep going and keep going and then change my ink color again i don't know how else i would do this well there was a circle around it so what if i did the circle around these three not quite a circle oops and this is the neat thing about this web app is like it has like a, a vector erase tool, so I can just erase entire chunks of lines. Cleans up images really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. So then there's these other sub shapes in there. These weird little drippy diamonds, not diamonds, they're like triangles, but like the, with like uh, sloping sides. Do you guys, when you do these drawing exercises at home, are you using color at all? I don't know why. I just, as we fix, okay. Mm-hmm. So, can I shift lock? No, I can't. Okay, I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to move that circle so I can continue to play with it. And building on this idea, I'm going to... It's not as easy as I thought. There we go. And then doing a slightly more refined version of that. And then let's break out the marker. Rick, salad. Uh, is it, is it, is it <laughs> three, like a, one like down and split. three over? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, let's see. One down, three over. Yeah, if that's what you're seeing. Yeah. Okay. Next to that. So it's actually four down, four over. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. We can all yes. see it. It's like three salad leaves.
So is is part of the, the what you get out of this the sense of just trying to draw without a sense of representation? Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Well... I, you know, as I look at it, I, I feel like I'm conjuring to mind the beginning of Buck Rogers in uh, the 1970s, 1980s television show with all those concentric circles uh, proceeding or like uh, advancing to the, the frame while Buck Rogers is slowly spinning away down into the frame. Uh, I, I don't think that was intentional, but I, I, I'm seeing it now as I'm drawing this because I'm just I was just. Yeah, I and that wasn't my intention. I was just playing with the repetition of shape, right? I just like like taking that roundish diamond and just like keep playing with it. Um So yeah. Okay. It's an interesting interesting idea. Yeah, I, I mean, as somebody who we've talked about this in the past with doing um what is that kind of drawing that we were doing the um it was like it was like the where we draw in the sketchbook and we don't think about trying to actually make a shape and as soon as the lines start to make a shape try to do something else. Um, meditative drawing, that's right. This is different in that it is trying to like play with shape purposefully, but still, you know, at least I didn't feel any uh, urge to play with representation and just like just look at the shapes and see what is interesting to me about the shapes and doodle with it. Oh, yeah. Uh, representation of nature in some some of it too where um it's not like not all of it is is symmetrical but there's there's this interesting variety that leans toward being iconic ish right because mm -hmm. i mean this is this was meant to be you know so put in sewn into clothing or put on the side of a ship and that kind of thing and uh my family this is how i represent or what have you gotcha Ah, uh, oh, uh, what do you what do you think? I think this this was a really cool a cool exercise. Um, and and continuing on with our uh, audio adventures. <laughs> oh boy. So what happened? So the NDI audio from your Skype kind of bops in and bops out, and I have you routed into another channel. So when there was doubling up, is because I had you coming in on another channel. And then the Skype audio came back and said, hey, here's Rob's audio. And that's when they got doubled. And then it went, it went I, so I turned off the routing or into the separate channel to give you just the single audio feed. And then that went away again. So 
I'm gonna have to pay very close attention to my audio mixer in OBS because uh, Skype's being uh, very impish today. But isn't it always? Wow. Okay, so this is very much a, a rough draft. <laughs> Exploring our setup. Exploring our setup. I, I, guess, I guess so. <laughs> uh, we're going to keep on playing with it. I don't know how serviceable the video will be on this one, but we'll at least have an audio episode. Um, okay, because I think your, yep, your NDI audio just came back, so now i got to yep. mute, mute yep. you in the separate channel so you don't double up. This is cute. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah cute. It's... um. Yeah, there's a lot of quirks as far as being able to do. Um, should we do another exercise? Because this is almost like this is ta this is the setup, yeah. right? Let's uh, do another, let's <clears throat> organically, we're we could jump into setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's let's do another exercise. I'm gonna create another page on the board, and we can switch to that. And what do you got? <clears throat> and all right, put away that book of symbols. And what I have now is the it's a it's a scribble exercise. So it's another not precious warm up, what have you. Um, that can emerge into whatever some maybe something you'd hang on your wall, but it's not really meant to um, to go there. So the idea is find whatever size a piece of paper. Um, something that is like a light, lighter line color. So using a pencil instead of a, a big thick marker for this first step would be helpful or like a thin line pen, even a, like a ballpoint, something that um, you can draw over. So, so you do, do some big scribbly shapes and, but not fill the page to the point where, um, you know, it's pure chaos, just something's there. And then from the scribbles, what is uh, what's calling out to you? And I think you could do any kind of animal you want, but then I am I personally am looking for a cat. So I have I see too many cats in this actually. So let's see what happens. Mm, let's go, and I I will actually add to the. Squiggle, but then I, I, I use the squiggle to inform the body shape and maybe some features in a cartoon cat. Too tempting to do the classic big fluffy tail thing. And then... They're lying in and... And then, of course, a bit of a little bit of cat features. And so that was just looking in the in the scribbles to find the outline of a cat. Okay. That that's the point of the exercise. This alternative version of the exercise is to then to take the scribbles and then find a region. And so if you're not if you're not feeling the you don't want to, the pressure of finding finding a cat in the in the scribble. Mm -hmm. Uh, just go ahead and make make regions. So you're just moving your hands. You're you're making uh, you're making shapes happen, and just recognizing uh, sections in the scribble. Mm. Okay. That's that's what it is. And so in the sections, just creating your outline or filling it in with a, a block of color. So lines of colors or block of colors. So either um, find an animal or find the shapes. All right. What do you think? Let's do it. So. Switching to the drawing board, and I'll here I'll, I'll divide our field. Here's mine. Here's yours. I'll do a quick scribble. Uh, try not to use any. Um, what am I trying to say? Try not to have any purpose behind the scribble. Just like just scribble. So now I'm looking for the cat in there. I'm gonna make my pen much bigger. Um. Okay. And where is the cat? Aha. And there is the cat. It is walking. 
It is walking and it's doing that swishy tail thing that my cat does when she's about to try to murder something. Shenandoah, my, the cat I got in October, is a teenager now. And uh, I think all she thinks about right now is blood. Well, it, it, funny enough, we have it, we have a um, a raven puppet that we got in Death Valley uh, a couple years ago, uh, and it's one of those folktales puppets, and that is her wrestling partner. So she likes to spar with it. I put the puppet on. I wrestle with her, and she bites so hard. I am so glad we don't let her outside because it'd be just like just piles and piles of dead animals in the backyard. So so she gets her exercise. She, we play chase the thing. And then we play wrestle the bird, but, but yeah, she's, she's like what, eight months old. So all she wants to do is hunt. So yeah, th that was, that was an interesting exercise. Um, I could also do it again and look for the regions. Let's do that. So I'll grab my eraser. I'll try it. I'll do one more version where I, I look for the regions of Basically, like, sort of like looking for, uh, kind of like looking for negative space a little bit. Kind of similar. Uh, mm hmm. In negative space was one of those things in when I was taking art classes in high school that, like, it was, I had a really difficult time understanding it. And uh, I'm not sure it was adequately explained to me, <laughs> uh, but I'll take I'll take the blame for like my lack of understanding. I'll say like I'll own the fact that I probably wasn't the easiest kid to teach. But um, it's one of those things where oh wow I didn't mean to do that. And let's I like using color nowadays. Oh my goodness, make your pen smaller, Jersey. There we go. And then with the vector eraser, I bet I could just like eliminate all of those starting lines and see what I am, uh, end up with. That's kind of cool. So, oh, and we lost your audio again. There we are. Did we lose you all together, Rob? Okay. Nope, there you well, are. Well, I'm here. Okay. Hi. All right. Boom. Now I've got something else that I can play with. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you, yeah, you got rid of all those, you know, all like, the lines. Yeah. After the fact, got rid of the squiggles and just see like, okay, well, what I've got now and we could do something else with it all together. How did you get rid of just the squiggles? Well, I drew it as one continuous line. So then when I went in with the, um, uh, vector racer, I just tapped it once and got rid of the whole line. Oh, Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. I'm assuming you, yeah. As you were saying that, I gave it a try, and it totally worked for me too. What an interesting tool. And it's this is called Owl Board or something. <laughs> a W W A P P A Web Whiteboard App. So. <laughs> someone's got to help them name that thing but maybe it's memorable i don't know i um yeah not not to do a, a you know a backhanded drive-by critique of of anything honestly but like um oh that name has so much straightforwardness it's um it's like hiding in plain sight kind of a name and yeah I, I say this being someone who has named lots of things in that same approach yeah, I, I had a difficult time remembering the name. I bookmarked it, and then I was like looking it up. I'm like, okay, what was it called again? It was a whiteboard thing. And then when I finally remembered, I was like, doh. Um, 
but it's it's a it's a pretty awesome application. The free version is pretty great. Uh, the subscription version is uh, even better. But I, I use this for um, mentoring students remotely, so we draw together like this. Um, okay, this is neat. That was a neat exercise too. Then they have this weird sort of Technicolor faux three-point perspective looking at a future city. <laughs> oh, boy. I um, see um, oh, there's a, there's um, some animal sitting, basically doing like that, 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 that casual, I'm welcoming you to my album. Here's a picture of me on my album where, mm -hmm. where it's like, I'm laying on my side. Anyway, I somehow <laughs> found that in this creature. You know, uh, greatest hits of, you know, what this is. Uh, hmm. Um, So yeah, this is this oh, is a pretty yeah. So you made you made a city, yeah. <clears throat> That's right. Uh, yeah, just playing around. Um, yeah. So, but I'm definitely going to use this with my students though, as like a warm up and cool down exercise. Um, That's great. But, I, mean, I would love to hear how it morphs and whatnot. Yeah, because uh, like adding just one more step or stage, all of a sudden you unlock not lots of new interesting things. Mm -hmm. It's like you got yourself out of a comfort zone. To, to discover a new pattern from your your own you know output right where it's like it, it, you you get to you get the benefit of just jumping into something fresh mm -hmm. even though yeah yeah all right so uh you still there rob yeah i am still here oh, hi okay great okay so, uh, how you feeling? Do you want to uh, do another exercise, or do you want to switch to, you know, the second do a do a break and then do the second half of the show? Yeah, I think now is a good time for a break. We've we've uh, shown a, a, some some fun warm ups and whatnots and, and whatnots and and have uh, and have uh, our tested our setup, plenty. Set up plenty. Um, um, so let's let's let's, let's do. To the next stuff. To the next stuff. All right. So in about uh, a minute and a half, we're going to get to talking about like setting up spaces to do these kinds of art exercises. Uh, but before we do that, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And those are the people who support us on Patreon. Patreon. Dot com slash Lena Tart is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in me and Rob and what we do, you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can cancel at any time. So you can just do a one time. Uh, contribution to help make the show sustainable. Uh, but I want to thank five people who have been supporting us on an ongoing basis. First up, Mike White. Thank you, Mike, for believing in us what we do. You can find Mike White uh, on Instagram at Mike White Robot. And Stephen Stonebush. Thank you, Stephen. It means a lot to us. And Dave Srise, longtime friend of the show. Thank you, Dave. You can find Dave Srise on Twitter at Dave Say. And David Armentrout. Thank you, David, for believing in us. Uh, your, your support means a lot to us. And finally, Dado. You can find Dado on Twitter at Dadotronic. You join them all at patreon.com slash lean to art, where you find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. It also gets you access to the uh, lean to art Discord. There's three private channels only for people who support us on Patreon. And I was posting in there uh, pictures of unboxing my studio recently, uh, setting up stuff that I had, had, I've had in a closet for a year and a half. Uh, join us once again, patreon.com slash lean into art. Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you. It really so does. Much. Thank you. All right. Um, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Oh, uh, here we go. Yep, because your NDI audio came back, so now I gotta mute your mixed in audio. Uh, okay. <laughs> and we lost your video, Rob. <laughs> oh, I know why, because you turned it off, so you can turn it back on. So we can see so that Skype can catch up to what we're doing. We'll have to keep iterating and playing <laughs> with this. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. All yeah, right, well, trying to get it all worked. Oh, oh boy. Next. Oh, that was a that was a fast <laughs> sound clip. All right. <laughs> We're gonna keep on rolling with it though. All right. So the second half of the show. Um yeah, studios and creative spaces. Uh I don't know. Do you want me to, to give you a, a look at what my studio space is right now? Yeah, would love to see what uh, what your setup is. How how, how is it progressing? Let's see if this works. I'm gonna try to switch. I'm, I'm gonna keep on adding to the fragility and complexity of this thing by going to my second camera. There we go. So, and let me. Oh, it's upside down. Let me turn it upside right. There we go. Come on. Here we are. So. Here I am, everybody can see on the Twitch stream, and here is my desk, and there is my empty wire shelf to put some of my equipment on, and then a light box, and this big empty room with blank walls. Are you looking at it on the Twitch stream, Rob? Yeah. Uh, power and network and stuff like that. Like, is, are there any, it, it, I guess, oh, as you, I guess, well, I don't know, you're encountering this new setup, is there anything that's, that's been particularly um, you know, easy or helpful or the problems you're, 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 you're working around? <laughs> well, I've got like a general, like new homeowner uh, experience to add to that, which is maybe not what you were looking for, but it's related is that, um, once I set up in here, I looked at the electrical box and I was like, ooh, this electrical box is from 1972. And who, the person, one of the people who lived here before did a lot of home um, adjustments to the electrical box. In other words, they doubled up lines to some of the fuses. And I'm like, oh, that won't do. <laughs> Especially, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Then, no, that's, yeah, what can you do? When a house has been around a while and yeah, you get the habits of the previous owners that, that get uh, embedded in, in the environment. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so I had to, like, that was one of the first things we had to do is I had to switch out the electrical or well, get an electrician in here to switch out the electrical box so that I could run all of the, cause like 1972 house wasn't made to run all of the electron electronics that we run in houses nowadays. Right. So that was one of the first steps. Totally. Yeah. And then um, the next step was is like setting up, uh, you know, network and router in a place that is like equidistant from all corners of the house so we can get a good signal. And also, I, but I kind of cheated a little bit and said, like, I'm going to make it a little bit closer to where I record the show. Uh, and one of the things I'm also thinking about doing is um, hardwiring with Ethernet to the Internet when we do the Lunatark cast just to eliminate, like, bring down that much, eliminate a little bit more ambiguity in terms of like the, the chain of events. Um, but then the other thing that I've got as a new development, and this is the first time in my entire life, I made it 45 years before I actually achieved this, is I have two studio spaces now. Never had this before, you know? Like, there's like 15 or 20 people in my family, and as a kid growing up, I was just used to not having designated space for myself to do what I want to do. Uh, shared a room with my, one of my brothers until, gosh, until well into high school. You know, so like th I've never needed a lot of space. I haven't like demanded a lot of space. Um, I can work with a very, very little. Like for the last six months or eight months, uh, anybody who's watched the Liam's Heartcast saw that I was recording out of my bedroom. Um, but now I've got a space where this is where I'm going to do this space is where I'm going to do all my recording, video production stuff, things like Lean to Art, things like my video teaching. And then I've got another space upstairs where it's like, this is a room for drawing. And that's exciting. <laughs> it is. It, it does. Like your, your, um, your house is like a platform for possible experiences. And how do you have to manage switching context between the different experiences? So, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Congrats, congrats on the new house and the, the, the new possibilities for exploring how you engage with yeah. your different modes, you know, everything. That's cool. So here's the thing that I'm thinking about, and I'm just beginning to think about, is that there's a certain degree to which this space is more public than the space that's going to be upstairs, right? I'm not going to be doing any live streaming out of the, the drawing room. I'm going to be doing live streaming out of this room. 
Now, do you think about that with what's behind you right now? Like, would you think about like what that's? Because I remember seeing like a joke years ago. Oh gosh, this is a long time ago. Where it was like people who do a lot of like Skype chatting with friends and they show like an aerial shot of their bedroom and there's this like cone of cleanliness behind them, but on either side of where it's outside of the webcam's view, it's just it's a catastrophe in their bedroom. Um, and I have to say, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I do, like, there's a certain level of performance to this, which we've talked about before. Like, I always wear the same clothes on the show, right? I always wear my black button down. And you can go back, I don't know how many <laughs> years, I'm always wearing this black button down whenever we do the show. And I, 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 I'm very conscious of that as a teacher. Like, I don't take my glasses off in front of my students, right? Like, it's just like, I think about, like, there's like a persona aspect that I try to maintain when I'm doing public performance of any kind. And so I'm wondering, like, do you think about that in terms of your space, too, or no? Or is this, is this like, a relatively, you know, new thought? Or uh, no, it's not, it's not a new thought. I've, um, because, I mean, I do, the, I do podcasting in my office, and I think about, uh, um, I mean, it's not like I have the option to sort of hit a button and the walls flip around, and it's the, it's the you know, it's the party office, and then it's a professional office. It's just my office, right? Yeah. I've been lucky to have have a space. I mean, I think the entire duration of our project, um, I did switch houses. This is a like a significantly bigger office than I had, and um, in in the old house, which I was in for eleven years, and then let's see, as far as the public aspect of it, yeah, I mean, when you I think it's it's become reflex to consider how do I get this to be you know presentable enough like for for this office it's like my closets have you know just storage and it's 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 cluttered it's packed as heck and it's whatever and it's I, I make sure my closet doors are shut <laughs> before we, before we we record typically and um and I just yeah I I try to have like um this rectangle of cleanliness there, there's sort of two rec like there's a, a this is an L-shaped room, and um, I can give a I can do the the wandering cam kind of, I'll, I'll at least look around from from this other point of view. So let me switch to that cam, okay. and other mi microphone. Okay, right, so oh, this was looking down at the desk, and I can whoop, pop that off of its stand. And um, all right, here's me. Am I, am I in the no? I'm upside down. Hi, <laughs> look at me. I fly upside down. <laughs> all right, so all right, now I can see. So let's take a look around here. Um, so standing at this desk, whoop, we lost standing we at this desk. We can't hear you anymore. Yeah, hard to give this yeah. tour. Yeah, and beyond mic. You got it. You got it. Your mic really <laughs> so, sensitive you now. See, so if you walk away from it, you just vanish. Yeah. 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 So this other side of the the um, office is like like storage and like handcrafted. Like I I did some project folders and stuff that are where I like I taped cardboard to a shelf and you know um, books. I don't know. I've I have collected a lot of books, which I'm I'm happy to um, to use. Like this this. Like this book, the the Japanese design motifs. That's um, you know just one of those things on my shelf where you know I come from an era where this is uh, it's like you you have your your reference material, right? All right, so I'm going to set this camera back. Actually, uh, hold on, I'm going to back up, and you can see like there's the desk, but then. There's wire hell down there, right? All right. That's something I'm working on trying to fix. Mm. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, managing network and power and uh, multiple machines mm -hmm. and like all the, you can see like my desk is, is like, I guess I have four screens I'm looking at. <laughs> Um, a couple of them are mounted on arms. Three of them are mounted on arms. One I can draw on. That's uh, that's my um, my iPad. My window surface is doing a, a lot of the the studio job, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
and where it's like this thing is it's it's where the audio and the video is all routed in and all this kind of stuff and then my mac is sort of the performance and show stuff machine and that's actually feeding into a um a uh, a capture external capture card um the the elgato uh, uh, hd 60s anyway so um like tons of experimenting, like, you know, trying to figure out how do I, um, like, how do I perform in this space? What is everyone going to see as I'm performing? I do think about how I get dressed or whatever, but I, I don't have like a, like a single uniform. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think a lot of, I, I do care to think about a lot of the stuff you, you, you explored yeah, too. I, I, to, but, to, be um, fair, to be clear and fair, I mean, I know I am very, I think I tend to fall more on the formal side amongst my friends when it comes to this idea. I just know that as a child, if I ever saw my teacher at like the grocery store or if I saw them with their glasses off, it always freaked me out as a kid. Like you're a grown up, you exist in this world. I'm in this world. I try to like respect that boundary with my students. Um, that's the kind of thing I think about. So, like, you yeah, know, it's like, yeah, that, that is awkward. I mean, what, what an interesting memory. So did you run into teachers well, in public? And feel like yeah, ugh, like ugh. when I was a little kid. Well, I grew up in a very rural town. You know, like there were 250 kids from K to 12 at my entire school. It was in like the half, half of them were your well, relatives, half, right? One of my I've already told the joke. You know, one of my classmates. Yeah, he was distantly related to every <laughs> uh, girl in the class. You know, which made like the whole dating thing hard for him. Um, but but yeah, yeah. So like it was it was very common to run into grown ups from my school outside of school. And yeah, so I just, I just, I don't think that I'm going to freak any kids out or anything. It's just that I think about like that boundary is a, is an important one for me to maintain, um, to, to make, I'm always available to my students as, as a counselor and guide, but, um, our relationship is, is very formal. I try to keep that formality there, if that makes sense. Until that, like, they get to be like in their late teens and then they can like intern with me and then the mentorship changes to where it's like, now I'm like guiding you to beginning your career. But when, when they're kids, it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a warm presence in your life, but our relationship stops at a certain point, right? Does that make sense? Well, it does. I mean, it's the whole idea of um, like, well, professionalism. It's the, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, there's a professionalism. It's, that's a, that's a big concept. That's probably a whole episode yeah, in and of itself it is. where thinking about like the, the context, contextualizing of your overall, um, you know, behavior and choices and how you present and, and interact. And it's, it's, it, it's sort of, um, it has a lot of problems, but I think it can be a very helpful thing too, where it's like you have this sort of um, clarity of like, I show up in a spirit of service to do these certain things and, and here's how you can recognize, you know, I, I'm, I'm here to help. I've got my podcasting shirt yeah. on and it's, it's, it's similar you. to the cartoon, right? A cartoon can be um, diminishing or reductive or it can be clarifying, right? Um, and I think about that a lot. Like, okay, so like if I have a uniform, if I have a certain look, that means I'm in a mode and that means that I have, I, I'm reducing myself somewhat I, because I'm here in a different kind of capacity than I am as a husband, as, you know, like a, a, a full human being, you know. So anyway, um, that, that would be an interesting discussion to have because I'm ready to learn about blind spots on that. Like maybe I'm not thinking about this as holistically as I could. But that's the way I have been operating. Let me put it that way. Um, but that's for maybe another time. But so, but like as far as spaces go, like maybe rounding up and like closing in on this thought, just like give me. Cause I'm selfish, and I want, I want to walk away from this conversation with you, like feeling a little bit more like focused on what I want to do. Is that? <sighs> do I like? There's something kind of neat about having this big blank space behind me, right? Or do I think about like what kind of oh what kind of imagery should I have behind me, knowing that I'm going to be appearing in classrooms and on podcasts like this, right? And does the uh, so does that endeavor need to be only informed in one way? 
right? That's, that's where the – so I live in sort of – it's a combination of it's practical and performance kind of mixed together, a little bit of inspiration and, um, and utility, all kind of coexisting. Yeah. And also what's – I think about this too where, where I use this – my space as a studio not just for the podcast but also for online workshops where um, – you know, analyzing the market and looking around at what other people do, I have purposefully decided to not go to the, like, as deep as I could on this. Because you could get um, really, really selective about exactly what book, exactly what picture, and exactly which workshop or whatnot, what appears. So you can do deep staging of of your environment and thinking about that, um, and managing it and choosing to invest a lot more time in it if you want. And, and in that way, if that adds to your message and your um, principles through which you want to operate or anything like that, then then sounds like it's a really positive addition for, for you, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, it was, it's, it's like, well, I do a little bit of staging, but I – and I have an eye on should I do more – but for now, I've held back, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like I could, I, like I look around. It's like when I'm doing a UX. So, so to be more specific, when I'm doing a UX workshop, I could have, um, you know, some some books like um, uh, the you know, conversational design, and um, I could have uh, Flow by you know Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, like in and in a way where it's like it's in camera, and and then it's also setting up the shot where it's like you can't. I can't just be satisfied by knowing that book is back there. You have to see it on the shelf mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the shot. Yeah. And so like in this shot, you see like, oh, I've got this, this Bomberman stuffy. I, I love Bomberman so much as a game. It's so <laughs> weird. But like, um, and I have a couple things I made. This is one of like that, this, this little, um, this photo back here is like of a dragon hovering over a lake. And that's like, one of the first things that I did as as a um, as a digital artist, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, this this little little bits of curation happening, but you know, it could go a lot deeper. And yeah. So, yeah. does that help? You? Yeah, you're pointing to something that I've been noticing because well, I've been attending like a lot of us attending a lot of Zoom webinars recently, and you see these speakers and they're sitting in front. Of, like I noticed that this happened like at enough times that I noticed the pattern. It wasn't just two. It was more than a few times. They're standing in front of a bookcase or sitting in front of a bookcase, right? And I, as I'm looking at the bookcases, I am looking at what am I seeing on there? What kind of things? What kind of tchotchkes? What kind of books are on the, on the, on the surfaces just out of a sense of just general curiosity? And then that got me thinking, not just about the staging and the professionalism, but, but also like just like storytelling. Like I wonder how much is there to support the message that's being this like when you talk about like these particular books for this particular workshop that you might do right um i don't know how intentional anybody was in the different things that i watched but as somebody who thinks really hard about this when i'm writing stories and when i'm deconstructing stories is like everything was probably there for a reason even if it was um subconscious right um do I think about sure. that? Or or is it better to just have the blank space and not get confused by that uh, cascading information behind me, right? Um, yeah. Either. I mean, yeah. I mean, do, I'm a fan of making it an intentional choice, whether it's and – it, and, it, and it can be iterative, too. You don't have to solve the entire puzzle – all at once for every seminar, for every meeting, for every whatever you're going to do and record, um, you can just tweak it as you go. Um, Because, and what's funny is a given space can actually be more more than one set. So if you think about, um, so I don't know, I do actually think about doing more and, 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 uh, and making this office, um, more stageable, right? So 
like rearranging where the shelves are and, you know, positioning things a little bit differently, I can put myself in, in a situation where it'd be a lot easier to make a couple of adjustments, no big deal. And then have like some baked in camera angles to, to perform like pre-recorded workshops and stuff like that. Um, because of course you're thinking about lighting and the, like, you know, what's in the shot, what's not. And, uh, the, you know, whatever other subtle things you're trying to convey, like, Oh, I care deeply about this topic and you see me immersed in things that represent this topic. And so, okay. Like thank you. I got what I needed yeah. because now I'm thinking I need to rig up something that is modular. I need something that I can switch out really easily. Right. Um, rather than like nailing into this wall, maybe panels that can slide or something like that. Right. So I can, Boom, different contexts, different moments. And I can even like the panels could be something where I can rearrange things on the pan. Oh my gosh. That is an interesting idea to explore. Um, uh, Why not have uh, that's like those. Okay. So did you get the sort of uh, like retail setting photographs as you grew up where you go to Sears and it's like someone turns a crank and all of a sudden there's a snowy scene behind you and they hand you a football and you're like, smile. <laughs> And then, you know, whatever. As a kid. I never got to do it. Oh, no, I take it back. I did get to do that when I was a little, little, little kid. I was too young to remember. I have a photo of me sitting on one of those things with, like, the, the background on a scroll behind me. But I never got to do that as, as I got older. Uh, and, 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 and funny enough, it was one of those things that I kind of wanted to do really bad. I'm like, I see all my friends that, like, go to their houses and they have the picture of them in front of, like, the, the barn with the horse in the background. I'm like, I want to do that. Not realizing what a, what a, what a goofy, <laughs> cheesy thing that would be considered later on. Um, but yes, yes, it was like it was like a background that was on a scroll that you could just like move or like like a, you pull down like a screen kind of thing. Like, like mm -hmm. Pee Wee's picture phone and Pee Wee's Playhouse, right? Like it pulls down the background, Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee speaking. You know? Yeah. Yeah, something akin to that. Yeah. So, it's interesting. That's that's like the extreme. That's like that's very very modular. Yeah. And now you can, you could be, uh, podcasting from outer space or the tundra, <laughs> or yeah, like parachute a physical version of Zoom backgrounds, right? Yeah. Um, and then yeah. and then as as for my like second space right now, um, I'm still in the midst of unpacking. I I had all of my stuff from my previous studios in boxes for a year and a half. Um, which, by the way, I found out I didn't pack some of the stuff with acid-free paper like I thought I did. And so I opened it up. I'm like, oh, you're awful yellow. How come you're so yellow? You didn't see the sun. Oh, this paper must not be acid-free. So that's a drag. But um, oh, that's yeah, it's okay. But um, but it, but it, the fun part is it's, it's been like sort of like a holiday or like a birthday party because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, haven't, I don't even remember owning all this stuff, you know. Uh, all of my Transformers and He-Man figures <laughs> and whatever. And and the nice thing about that space is, like, since nobody's going to see it, I totally get to just indulge in celebrating what I want to celebrate and not to think about anybody else encountering it, right? Um, and, and Anne's been really good about reinforcing that. She's like, you do what you want to do with this space. This is your space. You know, I don't have any say. Nobody has any say over this space. This is your sanctum, sanctorum, whatever. And then the electrician was here the other day, and he had to go in that room. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's that, that has been a lot of fun and really good. And, um, it's been a long time since I've had that. And I, I, when it's done and set up, I want to come back and revisit like what it's like to work in a space like that, uh, again, after so long. So it's great. So yeah, we'll have to check yeah. in as you progress in your setup. Yeah. And I mean, some of it might be obvious because we'll just see it on the show. Some of it, yes, but yeah. Well, right. That yes, exactly. This is, we're not turning this into a reality show where it's we. It's not going to be Leon Tart Cribs, no. Um, we, but we could, <laughs> <laughs> we could, we could. I I could post some of the pictures of it to the private uh, Discord channels. So that that is. Gotcha. Yeah. So. That's what I, I was assuming, like, as your setup in, like, your studio evolves. That's what I was referring yeah. to, not your, yeah. you know, your private spaces. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then, do you want to take uh, one more break and then do two-minute practice? I would love that. I, can, <laughs> Super can, curious can to I check Can I just in. say, Rob, like, I, I am so grateful 
for the work that you do on this project, but especially today where we've had so many hiccups and you have continued to stay fo focused and, and, uh, and flexible and just showing up like, with, like with like full intentionality, like despite like all the wires coming loose while we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, when you're a parent, like every day, all day is like this. I don't know. That's what it feels like. So it's no big. It's really fine. I, I mean, we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll keep at it. We'll figure it out. Sell me on parenthood. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to come back in about a minute and a half, two minutes. And we're going to do the wrap up with our final, our fi not final thought, uh, two minute practice and maybe a final thought. Who, who knows? But before we do that, we got to thank some other people who make this show possible. And those people are us. We make the show possible. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out is uh, we're about halfway, we're a little over halfway through June 2020 at this point, which means there's only a couple weeks left to vote in the Kids Comics Awards. What are the Kids Comics Awards? Um, it's it's a, for the, like the past six or seven years now at the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival, which would have been this month, got canceled because of the global pandemic. Um, we've held this awards ceremony and awards uh, show for people who make comics for young people, and how do you get nominated? Kids have to nominate you, and then only kids can vote for you. And so the ballot is currently on a2calf.com slash kidscomicsawards, where young people only can vote for their favorite books of 2020. Uh, there's uh, seven or so categories. The winner, or the winners, will get this cute Lego trophy with their category and their name and uh, a, a, a cute hollow foil sticker indicating that they are a winner of the kids comics awards 2020 so only a couple weeks left to vote please if you have any young people in your life or if you're a teacher or if you're a parent please let them know that they can vote until june 30th 2020 um a2calf.com slash kids comics awards uh rob you have a store but do you want to talk about the the bundle on itch.io Oh, rats. About 1,500 creators of, you know, there's small indie works, a lot of different kinds of creative works. Many of them were, are games, but some of them are like game engines, components, uh, comics, tabletop, um, rule books, stuff like that for role playing and all kinds of cool things. I, um, I actually did a deep scroll because I recommended this so much that I, I'm like, is there anything that just sort of slipped in that was like, uh oh. Um, I don't think so because it, it really seems like just a lot of folks, you know, showed up to join the bundle and they may have things that, that are about just speaking up for our audiences that aren't as represented as they could or should be in broader media. So you're going to get like all kinds of topics that are, that are not all ages and, and maybe challenging, but it, it's, it seems like nobody's trying to do harm in what's, what they're creating. So you got those, you know, that, that nature of work and, uh, like seriously, so many, like, think about that. Like, so the bundle costed $5 minimum and you would then receive like essentially 1500 things. Wow. <laughs> and 
And then lots of folks, like I think it earned like over on average donation was like over 10 bucks, right? So they raised in that bundle, which Guitar Fredder, I did get that in, uh, by the way. And so it was, it was neat to just show up and be, be a part of that. Like how, how could you not? If, anyway, um, then uh, they raised over $8 million. Oh my dollars. gosh. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So how cool that, that like this, this um, you know, just group of creators, folks who do this, you know, professionally, spare time, whatever, just stood up, made a huge bundle, and it, it, got, it got support from the community. It's, it's just wonderful to see. That's so, great. Um, that was that, which is now past. Mm, but Well, there, there will hopefully be others. Cool event. I mean, hopefully they set a precedent where it's like, let's do this more often. Um, the last thing we want you to check out today that we make is the, well, we don't make it, we participate in it, is the Lena Tart Discord. Invite link is in this sh the show notes for this episode and every episode. It's a forum for you to hang out with fellow leaders and us, share some work in progress, get some feedback on some work that you're working on, trying to solve the difficult uh, storytelling puzzles. Uh, also, just the social channel for the people who support us on Patreon where you can just like, share what's up in your life. That was where I broke the news that I closed in the house. I think that was the first place I posted about it on the internet. Um, so yeah, uh, the Leaning Tart Discord, if you haven't joined us there yet, please do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been really fun to get to hang out with you guys, uh, with, with the fellow leaners there. Okay. So time for two minute practice, is it? Right on. Two minute practice. Hi, Jersey. <laughs> Hi, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to talk about the practice that we did that we do every every week or so at two minutes at a go uh we call it the two minute practice so what what was our practice And it was all about like visualizing something from your journal. And then because we had such a journal related two minute practice, the pra the for the prior one, which was all about saying take two minutes at a time and just write down what's on your mind and you know, just one word or phrase at a time and just see what you collect two minutes at a time. So then these two could really connect. And uh, so you could look back at that practice of what was on your mind pick something and make something visual from it. Mm. So who wants to go first? Did you get you you had a chance to do this, right? I did, yeah. And not as many times as like I could have because of if you think about the the time between in the practices uh, when we're when we're um, on the on the rhythm that is what we normally plan for, it would be one one practice per week, right? But this there's been a few weeks between yeah. here and there, but I practiced, I think three or four times. Okay. Um, and I made an experiment on a lot of them where I, because I've been doing all this, this, uh, I, I've been doing a lot of, you know, reset up to be able to, um, to, to do interesting performances and streaming for the topics that I care about, uh, you know, teaching and celebrating and all that. Um, well, I've, I kind of combine it. So like I would, capture yeah i didn't broadcast or publish it anywhere but i'm kind of trying to kick a lot of tires metaphorically on my um my setup which has lots of quirks right so to record and see what i'm doing and all that so uh, you know it's it's sometimes combining projects to me for for me helps where it's like i know i need to i want to do a two-minute practice and um guess what i could test this while i'm doing that this setup mm. Um, so I did a bit of that, you know, found a lot of problems with my audio and video and frame rates and this and that along the way. So that was fun and helpful. But then, um, uh, the, let's see. So what did I do? I, I did a capture of, I picked three words a couple different times because, you know, because I don't, I like one word wasn't enough to, for me to visualize. So, um, which we, we showed sort of the, 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 um, the, the word chart um, mind map of sorts that yeah, on the prior episode that I captured. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, I think I remembered to share that in the Discord. If I haven't, I, I know I will. I'll follow up and do that. So, so I had this, you know, picture of my dry erase board, and I would, uh, and I, I started my two minute timer, and I'm like, well, one word isn't enough, and then I picked another word, and another, and then for me, I guess three words seemed to be enough. So I first I picked audience, love, and collaboration, and I could do the complicated setup. So, but here's what I got. So I I chose sticky notes, Jersey style, mm-hmm. to to limit the interesting you know the you, you combined words you made like a, a a visualization of three of the words from your word cloud mind map from last time yeah interesting okay it somehow it there wasn't a lot of planning involved it just i was like one word i feel stuck two words still stuck three words okay let's go <laughs> Well, that's that's the idea of this too. Is like is hack the game to make it into a practice that is valuable to you. So yeah, that's awesome. So did did you do any on this besides? I can show yeah, one. Please. And so the the second one is I did share power, universe, and heart. And so those are not very well um, written because I was starting to my two minutes were taken away. So I'm like, ah, I don't know what I'm so gonna do. The, and you should see that you're using your ball and H people. Um, that you use in a lot of your visualizations. And they're yep. all throwing stars, bubbles, happiness, and candy up in the air. And there's like the implication of a heart surrounding them, um, swirls yep. and magical symbols. And one of the two of the people look just like pleasantly happy, but one of the people has like down eyebrows. Like, I'm aggressively happy. I'm like, I'm loving you. <laughs> and you're going to, you know, I'm loving you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it was, um, it, yeah, as I was going, the, 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 the lower pressure of the, the simple shape characters with the ball, like a, the, the ball on top of an H, um, exaggerated H, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's a little pressure. So, um, so I was like, yeah, face exp- facial expressions uh, can communicate a lot. Not that I was planning exactly what I'm communicating because I'm really just feeling it out and seeing what happens. It's a very much a, um, a generative creative effort hmm. which means i'm not i'm not editing i'm not um trying to uh analyze and problem solve mm-hmm. yep just try to well i'm oh, yeah oh. you're trying to act a little bit on instinct right um mm-hmm. okay well for my practice uh it's funny i'm you have to use the um twitch stream to see what i'm showing because i'm gonna switch to my overhead mm-hmm. camera um, so I went with index cards this time instead of sticky notes, um, partially because as I was doing the practice, I was also packing up to move. <laughs> so it's like, where'd my sticky notes go? I don't know where they are. Oh no. Uh, like, well, I've got index cards in my bag. So, um, I got two different ones on this one card. And one of the words that was on my mind map was refund because I was uh, issuing refunds to people uh, a couple weeks ago. And so I wound up just, I was like, what do I think of when I think of refund? I'm, well, I think of money. I think of money flying around and somebody's being happy about it. So I did like a monster in one of those tanks where they like pl- put a plug in a wind machine and blow money all around. And you're just trying to like grab as much money as you can. Um, so happy monster grabbing, grabbing money to get a refund. I don't know. But that was like what the first thing that occurred to me. And two minutes, you don't have time to really play with it, right? So it's like the whole idea is like just go from go from instinctual. The other one was tightness. I had fun with this one because I was thinking, as I looked at the word tightness, I instantly had an image of somebody in an enclosed space. But then I was like, okay, well, let's let's um let's play with the idea of like getting all Will Eisner and like playing with like the lettering and like even trying to like turn some of the lettering sideways as this person's crawling through this tunnel. Um you know, like the the awkwardness, the clumsiness, the, the I'm scraping my knees on the walls kind of feelings of tightness because that was also something that was going on a couple weeks ago for me, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're staying at home and I was in a very small apartment at the time and I just felt like, let me out, let me out, let me out. <laughs> so, and also just like I'm thinking about pressures of work. Pressures of work is like being stuck inside of like, um, you know, you're surrounded on all sides by things, right? 
and then you're just trying to crawl through and just trying to survive. So tightness was that one. And the third one I did was planning. Planning was not one of my words. And um, the image that instantly came to mind actually was um, from people who are uh, longtime readers of my work, uh, th- from a cover of a book that I did in 2005, which was uh, The Front, a comic that I did as a webcomic back in like 2003 or 2006. And on the cover of the fifth chapter was uh, one of the main characters, Rex Doyle, leaning over a table and looking at photographs and lo- well, actually looking at the reader in a very intense and anxious way. And the whole issue was about like figuring out what they're going to do next as they get to like the third act of the book. And so... Uh, without even looking at that cover, it's just like that was the image that I just like instantly conjured to mind was planning somebody with their arms across the table, other people not so sure about the plan, you know, crossed arms, finger on the chin, but one person in the middle who's really thinking about, you know, like this is what we need to do. Um, and it is, as I have been with other practices, uh, I'm always playing with my color pens because I really enjoy like trying to like under the pressure of the two minutes, pressure. It's not really that much pressure, but what I mean is, is that like I'm trying to get this done, like finish something in two minutes. But I, I like the um, adding a layer of instinct where it's like, what color do I think the person who's doing the planning is? Well, blue. I don't know why. You know, I don't have a whole lot of rationale right now. I'm just, I'm just doing right. Um, what color the yeah. Five colors. So, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of options, but like, so I like switching back and forth between the things just to give me a sense of um, adding another layer of instinct to it, right? Uh, And I'm not having a a sense of I'm going to be able to intellectually justify all of these choices, just operating in the spirit of play, you know? Um, So, Ah, uh, like, like getting into a place where you don't have a rote pattern to just instantly draw from to solve a problem where your know, pro- problem identification and then taking some kind of action through like, so this problem needs this solution and now I need to just execute. And if you, if you throw a couple of different like limitations and, and yeah, it puts you in a position of, of, um, just. I, with a spirit of playfulness that I mean that that's the essence of what we're like the part of the meta of what we're trying to do with this I think so yeah, yeah. and uh, maybe I, I, I might have put words to this in the past I might not have but I get really suspicious of myself when I say well that's just the way you do it that's all like mm, uh, that that is like that's asking to you know run into a big a big wall of blind spots at some point or another like I try to stop myself and question, is this the right choice, right? Um, and not, not to the point of driving myself out of the room because you got to get the work done too. But, um, but like trying to, like, so that, that there's like a, le- a layer of instinct, a layer of inquisitiveness, and a layer of play for me when I'm doing these things. And I feel like staying in touch with that mindset is helpful when I'm doing the proper work that I need to do. That's what I'm getting out of this at any rate. Yeah, that, that's I, I yeah, I, I feel very similar and I, I like to to well, I like this practice of looking at the practice as well. And because I I think it can it can help with with emphasizing and, and trying to, you know, keep to to make this sustainable where if I'm if I'm going to do some practice, I want to make sure that, hey, is this a good fit or not? And if it's if I'm just sort of brainstorming something in the same way I always do, uh, Maybe th- I need to add that one of those extra layers of um, some kind of. God, what, how did you phrase that? La- a layer of instinct, the, instinctual, uh, uh, instinctual, layer yeah. of instinctualness, uh, or an instinct, a layer of play, and a layer of uh, curiosity or inquisitiveness. I like that. That's, that seems pretty useful. I mean, it sounds like, oh, it's it's taking. Oh, you. Well, there. I can still feel a magic in the creative process while trying to characterize and understand how I relate to the creative process and making that more relatable for others at the same time. I guess 
it doesn't it doesn't waste the flavor. For yeah, me. yeah, agreed, agreed. I I, I don't I don't want to suggest to anybody that I ever feel like I'm in full control. And as a matter of fact, when the, when the work feels best, it's when I like relinquish all control and just let it just happen, like get lost in it and that flow state stuff we've talked about a zillion times in the show. Um, but I also never want to take it for granted that I've got this figured out because then. Well, that way, that way is desiccation and death, right? Like it's, it's just like you want to suck the life out of something, act like you got all the answers on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that would be the anti lesson. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, um, no, that, that's that, which I think is super useful. So, yeah, thanks for exploring all that. Yeah, so, what do we want to do for um, this week's uh, practice? Hmm. I we were doing in the in the main show lean into art a bit of um in a way like reverse engineering compositions and stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you think of doing something with that? Oh, to try yeah. to I could easily do that. Yeah. I mean I mean that, that that's that's a practice <laughs> I could easily fit into my week because it's something I'm doing all the time anyway and it's something I could do with a little bit more intentionality. So um but since I already, since I interrupted you, let me ask you for clarification because you might have been thinking something I wasn't thinking about. Um, what do you mean reverse engineering compositions? <laughs> so take something that's finished and uh, use your point of view to sort of turn it into um, simple shapes and relationships. Mm. So you could do that as a va as a value study where you recognize the, the the contrast among elements or lines. Either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're if you're feeling comic-y or painterly, whichever, and uh, just f capture the um, what is speaking to you a about a composition. And I would say you could do one composition at a time if you wish, or you could try to do multiple. So, for instance, if you look at a comics page, you're probably going to encounter multiple compositions, mm -hmm. right? So you have the, they have the collective composition of the panels. That's something, but then there's also within each panel you have yeah, yeah, yeah. its its own That's composition. Good. All right. And but you don't have to use comics. Pick anything you want to, to to sort of reverse engineer the composition of it. That's great. All right. Uh thanks, Rob. Well, thank you, Jersey. And I think we've reached the end of the podcast. So Thank you, Rob, for being so flexible today with all the weird hiccups we have. Thanks, everybody, in the chat for hanging out and giving us, like, feedback on when we were, like, turning the knobs to, like, make sure everything was working right. Um, and, and Super helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jersey, and, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining and us. And we record this show weekly, usually Thursdays at noon Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central. We stream it live on twitch.tv slash lean into art and then collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash lean into art and lean into art.com. We'll be back next time with another show. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of LeanIntoArt.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of LeanIntoArt.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger. Lots of places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at LeanIntoArt.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user LeanIntoArt. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>